What's up, math scholars and math haters? This is Mr. W. Today we're going to tackle question two in the Math One questions that North Carolina released this past school year. We can see that we're just looking for which graph between A, B, and then C and D are not shown yet represents the shaded region that matches the solution set for this linear inequality. Now, in order to do a question like this, we'll need to know how to solve inequalities, some principles of working with inequalities, as well as graphing a linear inequality. All right, so at this point, I just want to identify that this thing looks more like it's in standard form, where our number is by itself and our x and y uh, share the other side of the sign, whether it's equals or less than or whatever. And in order to work with a linear inequality in the easiest way possible, we want y to be by itself. So y something and then all the junk x and then all the other junk. So we want it to look a bit like that, where we have y by itself. So to get there, I'm just going to do my best to not touch y at all. So this is Fort Knox. I'm going to get rid of everything else. Um, as I go ahead and try to add, subtract, multiply, and divide, divide as needed. All right, so I'm going to start by saying that this is positive 2x. And I don't like that this is sharing a side of this inequality with y. So I want to get rid of it the same way I would if I were solving an equation. So to get rid of positive 2x, I need to subtract 2x. So now positive 2x and negative 2x cancel, and I'm left with negative y is less than 4 minus 2x. So let me go ahead and write that over here. And now... I'm going to think of this as negative 1y, just imagine a 1 here, and I'm going to say, okay, let's go ahead and divide by negative 1, since negative 1 is being multiplied by the variable that I want to get by itself. So let me write that out, divide by negative 1, divide all this by negative 1, so I'll end up applying the negative 1 here and here. And now, these are going to cancel. I'll go ahead and write out the last form of my linear inequality. All right, so I have y on the left side, and on the right side, dividing by negative 1 is the same thing as just changing everything positive to negative and negative to positive here. So 4 will become negative 4, and then negative 2x will become positive 2x. And then I'll go one step further and rewrite this so that it looks a little more familiar, a little more like something in slope-intercept form, and call it 2x minus 4. But now this sign in the middle is not going to be quite what I'm expecting. Um, and I have to remember that if I divide by a negative number or I multiply by a negative number, then I have to take this sign and change its direction. So if negative y is less than all of this, positive y is less than the negative of all, or is greater than the negative of all of this. So now that I have a function to work with, y is greater than 2x minus 4, I'm just going to go ahead and see which graphs match that, or which graphs match the line. So I'll look for the line 2x minus 4. Now, as I look at A and as I look at B, the key part that tells me that neither of these are going to work is this minus 4. This minus 4, if this were just a line and not an inequality, that would be my y-intercept, the place on the y-axis, the up or down axis, where my, where, where my line hits it or where my line hits the y-axis. And since I'm looking for a y-intercept of negative 4, choice A and choice B are both out, because the lines that I see drawn here actually hit the y-axis at positive 4. So that's not what I'm looking for. So I'm going to go ahead and look at choices C and D. I'll go ahead and rewrite y is greater than 2x minus 4 here. Sorry about the little bit of shaking. But um, looking at C and D, both of these look to me like they're going to hit the y-axis at negative 4. They're going up 2 for every 1 they're going right, which means if I went left 2, they'd have to go down 4. And if you can imagine them hitting right about here, that would correspond with a y-value of negative 4. So that I'm okay with. But now is the part when I need to look at this greater than sign. Essentially, greater than means I look at everything above the line and say, that is true. I will test an ordered pair from each of these, but choice D is looking like the most likely answer for this. 
um, and to go ahead and actually test some of these, the easiest ordered pair to test is 0, 0. If 0, 0 works, if I plug 0 in for x and 0 in for y and get something that makes the inequality true, then that's a pretty good sign that choice D works and choice C doesn't, because you can see they actually shade opposite regions there. So if I plug in 0 for y and 0 for x, that'll get me... I'm wondering if 0 is greater than 2 times 0 minus 4. 2 times 0 is 0. 0 minus 4 is negative 4. And now that I've gone ahead and tested 0, 0, plug 0 for y and 0 for x, and gotten that 0 is greater than negative 4, I'm happy with this, because this is true. And since this is true, it shows me that 0, 0 has to be part of the solution set, and it shows me that D is, in fact, my answer. So that's how I narrow down um, a question like this using both characteristics of the actual Y and then something X plus or minus something part, um, and then using characteristics of the graphs of the inequalities themselves. Uh, this is all about comparison and knowing how to navigate your functions even when they look like inequalities.